Hello and welcome to another LSpec training video. Uh, this one is going to expand on our previous investigation training video and we're going to go over some more of the features and functions that you can access in uh, your investigation module. And this is going to help you, you know, ex expedite your your processing and to help design your your investigation look how you want. Um, the first thing we're going to cover today is your mouse clicks and each of the mouse clicks serve a certain purpose. Your left mouse click is your zoom. So you left click hold and then you can zoom in and you can keep zooming in and zooming in as much as you want to. And we'll use our previous time frame. Go back a time step. Your right click allows you to create a second view. So now we have a view up here of the zoomed segment and then our original view here. Okay. That allows you to drill in um, while still maintaining your original settings over in a different different window. Go ahead and close that. And then finally the middle mouse click measures. So you see I've got from here to here. So down here it gives you your from your timestamp to your timestamp and the duration of your timestamp. And then you middle mouse click again to get rid of it. Here we have a query and your time features where you can go in and change your time, your date, your month, hours, minutes, seconds, um, whatever you want to do to um, increase your or decrease your uh, data. So right now we've got 423, 423. Let's go ahead and change that 422. Now, nothing happened because once you change it in this box, you need to run the query right here. So start query. And now we have our new um, data window. And as you can see, we had you know, a little bit of voltage, under voltage in that 12 hour period. Okay, so we're going to go back to our previous time frame again. Um, you've seen me use this before previous time frame next time frame so these allow you to swap back and forth between the different time frames that you may have um, expanded or changed to we have a pin back and back and if you click the little drop down arrow it tells you how far you can go so you can go backwards a second or you can add a second minute hour day week month year so this is another way of doing it right here. If you want to just do a minute, we're going to select it. So we added an extra minute. Now, every time I click this, so we have a minute selected. Every time I click this, it's going to keep adding an extra minute um, to the back end. Same with the forward side. Um, these are extremely useful when you're analyzing a SAG from your power quality tab because you'll have just you know a sag and maybe a second on either side of it this allows you to really explore forward and backwards um, your data and really find what led up to your events here we have our expand time key so you can actually multiply what you your window frame here um, one and a half times, double it, triple it, um, times four, times five, times ten. So you would select that and, if, and then, you know, just press the button here. We're going to do one and a half. So what it did now is it expanded my original time frame one and a half times. And then we have our res, uh, drilling in our navigation mode.
So this allows you to move the bars as opposed to zooming. So that's a, a personal preference. Okay. Here we have save your investigation, share investigation, and export investigation. Save does exactly what it says. It allows you to save your investigation and reopen it um, at any given time. Share. If you click this, it will open your email client, your default email client, and email this investigation to a colleague. Um, so they can see what you're looking at and you can discuss. And then export investigation. Uh, we've gone over this briefly before. This exports it to a Word document. And once you have your Word document, um, then you can email it to your customers, your clients. You can modify it however you want to modify it. I'll go ahead and open that up real quick just to briefly go over it. Um, this is all changeable in the XML files. And we'll go into that into a much later invest, uh, training video because it gets really complex. So this gives you all the, the information and the data you need, lets you make your notes, um, save it, and then you can export it however you want to, to a customer. Okay, and then a few more over here, the little chart settings. Um, I'm going to go ahead and add a new chart real quick, just so we have something else to look at. And we'll add current, uh, basically because I just want to explain something and it's easier to show it. So when you have these individual charts, you notice each one of them has their own settings. Okay. What I do up here in this setting, so I'm going to hide the legend. It only hides it for this chart. It doesn't hide it for this chart. Okay. So anything you do, you're going to have to do um, a couple of times over from here. All right. So I'm going to get rid of this again. Um, so, you know, I just showed you how you can hide the legend or show it. Hiding the crosshair. So, right now, here's your crosshair. You can hide it. Or you can actually add a vertical and horizontal crosshair. Um, I personally, I just prefer just this one. Um, I don't really need much else other than that. Um, when I hover over it, it gives me my average values um, in the little pop-up box right here. So that's about all I usually need it for. Um, export. This allows you to, to get a picture. Um, export it to Excel. Uh, so when you do export to Excel, I'll we'll go ahead and do that real quick as well. It gives you not only the graph that you see um, but also gives you timestamps data so you've got your your date and your timestamp and then your RMS data point by point so that's handy for people who like to get their data out and put it into a different uh, different program play with it Let's see, normalized display mode. That changes it to a percent value. So it's more of a PU as opposed to a actual value. The axis settings allows you to change your, your axis. So right now we're at 289 to 292. We could change this to 250 to 292. Um, do it in single steps. Apply. Okay. 
Uh, that doesn't really do anything. It just looks horrible that way. So I'll just, whoops. And the good thing is, anytime you do it, if you just go back to auto settings, it'll automatically take it back to the way it was. So that's a handy little undo button. Split the charts. This will split this into three separate charts. So now I have three charts instead of one. And we're going to expand. We're going to take V2. Put it back here and take V3 and drag it back up here. So we've recombined our charts. Color change. Click on the variable you want to change the color to. Change the color. So you can change the color of all your little, your, your trends. Um, show your min max values. This gets really cluttered. Um, so I typically leave that off. You can get the same values by adding a min-max graph. Okay. So that is a little bit more in-depth information into your investigation area. Um, we'll continue to be adding more features in the videos. Um, explaining more functionality in our future videos as well. So thank you for uh, watching the video. Be sure to follow us on YouTube. Connect with us on LinkedIn and like us on Facebook. The links are in the description of the video. Thank you and have a great day.